Hey everyone, Ken and Profit here with another Blender tutorial. In this video, we're gonna rig up this 8-bit Mario character. So we're gonna just kind of create him start to finish. Uh, you can see on my character what I've done, I've added uh, some specific little controls. If we come here to this pose bone, uh, we can pick what pose we want the character to land on so that we can easily animate this. So this would work well for any sort of stop motion character that you wanna uh, maybe create the poses beforehand and then just be able to toggle between them to sort of create a stop motion uh, animation. So it doesn't have to, you don't have to apply this obviously to a Mario character, that's just the little use case that I did. And then I added some other options here on this little rig. You could adjust the thickness of him, show kind of the pixels of it and a little bit of beveling there as well. So uh, all to make a, a really fun little Mario animation, I made this little Mario world. Uh, all of this, if you don't want to do any of the work and you just want to download this and play with this character uh, in this world, you can download that through my Patreon. Shout out to all my Patreon members, you guys are awesome, thanks so much. Uh, but for now, let's get into the tutorial. So I'm going to create a new Blender file and I'm just going to delete everything. And I'll press Shift A and uh, let me go to the front view first. Shift A and I'll add in a reference image. Uh, you can download this one for free, link in the description. But if you want to, uh, if you want more poses than this, there's a lot of sheets online, just Mario 8-bit gameplay pose sheets that you can grab. Uh, but you can see this is just sort of pixeled out what, uh, what each of these little individual poses are. So let's focus on just a couple of these uh, for our character. We don't have to make all of them for the sake of this video, but let me just slide this reference over and I'm going to press shift A and add in just a plane. I'll rotate that and I'm just going to scale this guy up and get it to match our grid a little bit. So I'm going to control R, create a loop cut right there in the middle and I'll just slide it over till that one's centered and then I'll control R and kind of center that one up and then I'll just control R and then middle mouse my wheel until I get the right number of loop cuts that match the uh, number of pixels there. There we go. Do the same for this side. Again, you might have to slide them around a little bit, but it's fine because as long as the number of pixels matches up to the grid, uh, then the spacing will all kind of work out. It'll it'll look correct in the end. Perfect, so uh, that's our little uh, base grid here. Let me duplicate that and just move it over here for our second pose. And now it's uh, just a really easy matter of uh, deleting faces. <laughs> Basically carving out uh, what part of this pose we don't need. So this is all really simple uh, modeling, if you can even call it modeling. <laughs> really just deleting faces. Uh, so yeah, fun. What'd you do for work today? Deleted faces. Sounds a little bit like uh, a little bit violent. You don't want to delete faces in real life. <laughs> Go to jail for that. All right, so there we go. Look at that. Look at you, modeler you. We've uh, modeled one whole pose. Oh, extra face there. Uh, I was in uh, face select mode. I was just grabbing, pressing X and deleting faces. Let's go ahead and uh, do do the second one here. So I'm going to grab this grid over. I'll probably time lapse this, but I'll just really quickly map out this one. All right, so second pose done. So if you're making this for real, you'll want to continue however many poses you want. With my final character, uh, I did 10, including a blink. For our purposes here, let's just start with two. Okay, so now we just need to create the materials that we can map each of these pixels too. So I'm going to create a new material. I'll name it red and let's just select this material with the eyedropper. It's not quite giving us what we want. Let me boost the saturation a bit. There, that looks a little better. And I'm going to take the roughness all the way down and the spec all the way down. We can pull back some saturation a little maybe. All right, and I'm going to come down here to viewport display as well. And I'm just going to grab that viewport color. Viewport color is not an exact science. So there's rendered, there's solid, there's material. Okay. All right, so let's make a new material. Just grab that red and duplicate it. And we'll name this tan. And let's just grab the tan color here. 
and to the viewport display as well. And now let's just assign those, all of those uh, skin, skin tone colors here. And then uh, same story, new material, duplicate it. We'll name this brown. All right, so I've got all the colors assigned and uh, we don't need our reference image anymore. So I'm gonna just go ahead and delete that. Okay, so now we have two nice poses here of our Mario character. Looking good, all the colors are linked up. And uh, yeah, we're ready to rig this guy up so that we can actually animate it. So uh, there's a couple different ways we could set up a rig to toggle between these two objects. You'll see we have um, two objects here in our, our collections outliner. We could set up the rig to just toggle between the visibility of these two objects, or we could uh, combine the two so that these read as just one object in our outliner. So that's actually the method we're gonna go with here, um, just because it, it, you end up with a little bit cleaner of an outline setup. You have just one object instead of multiple if you were to do uh, multiple poses. But just so you know, the same method we're doing kind of works for for either either way you decide. So what I'm gonna do is just grab this pose, I'll grab our first pose here, come into the vertex groups, tab into edit mode, and select all the faces by pressing A. Create a new vertex group, and I'll just name this pose underscore one and assign it. I'll grab this object and add a new vertex group, name it pose underscore two, and assign that vertex group. So now each object has a vertex group assigned. And the reason you wanna do this before joining the objects uh, is it, it's gonna be a lot harder to grab those groups after you've joined it. Uh, so yeah, make sure you do it beforehand. And then let's just line these up so that they directly overlap each other wherever they have the same pixels you want them to to line up. And if one, I think I on this one, his hat, I sort of messed that up. So I'll just straighten that up because you want the things like his nose don't change. And that's kind of a, that's kind of a canon thing. Parts of his poses, he doesn't actually change levels. So uh, some parts of him don't even move. Okay, so you wanna make sure those match up, all right? So we have pose one and pose two right there. So let's grab bo both objects together, press control J and now they're one object. And you can see the vertex groups were uh, combined there as well. We have one and two, which is great. Okay, so uh, now everything's jumbled together and uh, that's not at all what we want. We don't want that. We want to be able to switch between the two. So let's grab everything here and control A will apply all the transforms. Okay, so that everything's zeroed out. And now how do we view the different vertex groups we created? Well, I'm glad you asked. We can uh, add a modifier and we're going to use the mask modifier. And you can see the mass modifier allows us to choose our uh, different vertex groups we've created here. So we have pose one and pose two. So we can uh, visualize each of those individual poses right there just using that mask modifier, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and duplicate this mass modifier, set this first one to pose one uh, and undisplay pose two. And then we'll name these as well, pose underscore one pose underscore two. All right, so now we need our rig to drive how these masks are being are displaying and pulling that vertex group data. So how do we do that? Well, let's add in an armature. I'll scale up this bone to be roughly the size of Mario here. And in edit mode, I'll shift D duplicate that bone and move this guy up here. This is going to be our pose select bone. So with that one selected, shift select the main control bone, control P and do keep offset. So now those are attached and it can maintain its space above there. I'll tab into object mode, grab my character first, shift select my bone, control P and we'll just do with automatic weights, okay? So now our object is joined to the bone uh, with, it should be 100% weighted to this bottom bone. So if we go into pose mode, we can grab this master control bone, and this is what you should see. The object should be perfectly parented to it. You can scale, um, and then you can independently select this top bone. Make sure that it's connected that way where you can independently select these two, because this is the master control, and this is just your pose selection bone. 
Okay, so once that all is set up, let's select our pose control bone right here. Come over to the bone settings and we'll check under custom properties, check new. And you see if you press in and bring up this side panel, this new uh, properties tab shows up on this bone. So it won't be on this bone, it'll just show up on that bone. Uh, and it didn't, so we did it on the wrong one. So delete that. This is the finicky thing. Make sure you select this top bone. You can, you can rename them if that's helpful and check new. But you want to make sure it's not on the bottom bone, it's on the top bone that that custom properties tab shows up. So I'm going to rename that property name to just be pose. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is right click on this value here and choose copy as new driver. And then I'll go into object mode, select our character, go into our modifiers panel where we have our, our vertex group masks set up. I'm going to grab the display, the little computer icon here, on the first one, I'm going to right click paste driver. So we copied from the bone settings as a new driver. We're going to paste that driver. You can see our computer icon turns purple here, showing that uh, there's a driver there. So I can right click on that, edit driver. And now we get the driver's property panel. We're going to change this from average value to scripted expression. And you can see everything should be set up here. It has the correct bone selected and everything. What we want to do is change our expression. It already has the pose in there from pasting the driver. So let's set this up so that if we're on selection number one, it chooses pose number one. And we can do that with just a simple true false statement. So one equals true, two equals false. So one if, so basically true if pose equals do two equal signs equals one else zero okay and we can choose update dependency all right and now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing to pose number two so paste driver and then we'll do edit driver oops edit driver again scripted expression and this time one if pose equals two equal signs, two, else zero, okay? And we can update dependencies on that as well. Now you'll notice uh, this will just affect the visibility of our pose. So what we wanna do, make sure you save this, sometimes it bugs out here. Copy this driver and paste it on the render selection as well. Copy driver, paste on render. Okay, so now what we should have, if we go into pose mode of this, pose number one is reviewing pose number one. We go to two, I'm reviewing pose number two. So now you can animate between these two values by just having this little slider that you can key. If we go to number three, you can see they're both combined, which is not what we want. So let's set that one up. Go to object mode. Grab this, and this time, instead of doing it on the modifier, we're going to grab the actual object in our outliner because we want to just basically turn off the visibility of this whole object on pose number three. So if you don't see the computer icon, just come over here and toggle that on. Okay, so now once again, we're going to paste the same driver, edit the driver, and... Uh, set this to three okay and now make sure you copy this driver and paste it onto the camera icon as well so that the render settings it so that it also turns off the render visibility okay so now if we go to pose mode and we go to pose number three everything disappears you can see that happening up here in real time so pose one two three so you can see this is a really fun way of making any sort of stop motion character where the poses have been created beforehand. You can easily just toggle those right here and animate them like so. Now what happens if you want to add some fancy other functions to this character, uh, such as like uh, some thickness? Well, we can do that with a modifier as well. So let's just add a uh, solidify modifier. 
and let's say the thickness is uh yeah something like that well you could add another driver to this this level of thickness right there um right here on the bone so let's grab this bone come under the custom properties and check new and we could leave this be a zero to one slider right there so we could name this thickness and we could copy this driver uh, copy as new driver and then go back into object mode and grab this thickness right here and do paste driver okay so now this bone in our post settings this thickness value is going zero to one for the thickness just like that so that's pretty cool there's a lot of different other little controls you could like i said you could use those booleans to do check bar check boxes like i had one for a bevel one for wireframe different things you can set up right in your rig uh, so that you don't actually have to go into the modifiers it's just all linked up right there and you'll notice that solidify gets applied to both of the poses here all right so now what happens if we want to make this bone be a custom custom bone we'll just shift a add in uh let's do a text rotate that by 90 degrees and i'll say pose whoops pose move this over here and you could use a custom font if you want and then we'll just do set uh origin to geometry and now object let's do convert to curve okay and now let's create a circle as well for the master control so these are going to be our custom bone shapes so this is a curve this is a curve so let's come here to our bone settings and under viewport display you can see this custom shape so we can choose our text now that bone reads as pose and for this bone let's use our circle um, you could rotate the control here or you can rotate it in uh, right here just 90 degrees if you want the scale to be smaller you can adjust that so now you can hide the objects that we used to uh, make these let's just move them to a collection name it hidden and disable that we don't need that so now we have our character here and we can go into pose mode we can animate this control we can go into pose and we can animate what pose we have so that your mario guy can be running or blinking or you can change the thickness so like I said, there's a lot of other ways you can rig this up, a lot of functions you can add. Of course, you can download uh, the Mario character that I created, has a lot more poses there. So if you want to start animating and make a, an animation, that'd be super cool. I'd love to see what you guys do with that. But I hope this was a fun tutorial for you, how to create your own 8-bit Mario character, complete with uh, setting up the materials and then rigging with just simple rig control. That really just picks the different poses, but allows you to animate a lot quicker, a lot smoother. Uh, so hopefully this gives you some ideas on some 2D stop motion characters that you can create in Blender. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, shout out to all my Patreon members. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Your support really means a lot. And uh, I don't think I've ever done a character tutorial on this channel. So uh, if you liked it, smash the like button, subscribe. I uh, really appreciate it. If you want me to do more character based tutorials, uh, just let me know. Just It's kind of new territory for me here. So let me know if you guys like this. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.